of the celebration of Kwanzaa comes at a time of heightened hope and historic turning, not only for us as a people, but for this country and the world. There is a rightful and widespread sense that we are on the verge of new possibilities to repair and renew the world, to reorder our lives and priorities and engage in practices that promise new ways to relate to each other and the world. And there is also this companion sense, more developed than it has been for some time, that if we are ever to have a just, peaceful, and good society and world, we must respect each other, work together, and share the good and goods of the world in a just and equitable way. It is this model and moral stance of cooperatively creating, cultivating, harvesting, and sharing good in the world that grounds and shapes the vision, values, and practice of Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa's ancient origins are indeed centered around the celebration and harvesting and sharing of good in the world. And this celebration is rooted in cooperative projects of gather, gathering together in harmony, planting the seeds and possibilities of good, cultivating them with required care and consideration, and patiently working to bring them to fruit, flower, and fulfillment. For we know there can be no harvest, and indeed no hope or sharing of good without the cooperative mutually respectful work that makes possible and produces the good we all want and deserve. Kwanzaa is also created in the context of the Black Freedom Movement. And so it not only borrows from the ancient teachings around the harvesting of good and the sharing of that good, but it also stresses the cooperative nature and need of the struggle required to achieve a shared goal. It is a lesson of life, struggle, and teaching of Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, Marcus Garvey, yes. Fannie Lou Hamer, Malcolm X, Martin King, yes. Amikar Cabra, Yah Santawa, yes. and countless other ancestors of heavy weight and worth, worth in the world. So that there is no hope without struggle. That's right. A lot of people really believe that the election of Obama means the end of history. Yes. And that there's nothing else we need to do. But that's not real. No. <laughs> that's not real at all. What Obama's election represents is a distinguished and important mark in the long journey and unfinished fight to expand the realm of human freedom and flourishing in the world. It's an important marker, but it's not the end of history. Also, we must understand that it's black people that brought him there through struggle. That's right. Those people that opened the way so that he could walk through. Those people that gave him spiritual and moral grounding. Yes. Dr. Reverend Jeremiah Wright and Trinity United Church of Christ. People talk about white people elected Obama. No. That's not real. Only 43% of white people voted for Obama. That's right. Keep that in mind because the European wants to pretend this shows political maturity on his part. Please. I doubt it. You know what I'm saying? In fact, it becomes a way for them to use a moral mask yes. to hide the continuing oppression they do in this country and the world. That's right. And what we must do is answer all this with continued struggle. Uh. And so I appreciate the achievement, but I do not believe it's the end of the struggle for a just and good society and a good and sustainable world. And we have this content, this conversation in Kwanzaa, because sometimes people forget that Kwanzaa is born in struggle. That's right. And if you read the language and the discussion of each principle, it starts out with striving and struggling. From the beginning, Umoja 
unity, to strive for and maintain unity. That means an active striving. That means a struggle to be nice, to be kind, to understand, to respect. And don't you ever doubt it's not a struggle. People pretend it's not a struggle, but it is. And people be getting mad on the way home. So we are struggling. And as Kapral said, the greatest struggle is a struggle against ourselves. And we add, what do we say? Against that in us, which is in contradiction to our value and the choice we've made for a new life and a new way of being African and human in the world. Uh. We all sit here and we've chosen to be new Africans. Now. But how long does it last? At the end of the lecture, what will you choose to do? And how will you relate to each other in your daily life? It's nice to say I love humanity, because humanity is absent. It's not going to even bother with you. Rescue me if I'm wrong. That's right. It's your woman or your man, your children, your parents, your friends, your neighbors. That's how we know who you are, how you relate to them. So Kwanzaa marks a profound reorientation. Now. I want to say that again. Kwanzaa marks a profound reorientation of how we understand and assert ourselves in the world. In fact, one of the main reasons I created Kwanzaa was to reaffirm our rootedness in African culture. As I've always said, we had been lifted out of our own culture and history and made a footnote and forgotten casualty in Europe's history and culture. And as Amikar Cabral said, our liberation struggle was to return to our history and our culture, to speak our own special cultural truth, we say, in us, and to make our own unique contribution to the forward flow of human history. That's what we were supposed to do. And so Kwanzaa, well, <laughs> So Kwanzaa marks, I repeat, Kwanzaa marks both a culture and political struggle to return to our own history and culture, to reaffirm our identity and dignity as African people, and to reaffirm our social justice tradition in and through transformative struggle for serious social change. Uh. Thus, we must not forget nor this nor the obligation in the morality of remembrance and recommitment. There's a morality of remembrance and recommitment that is taught in Kwanzaa. It is a teaching of our foremother, Fannie Lou Hamer, who said there are two things we should all care about, never to forget where we came from, and always pray the bridges that carried us over. And so we don't forget Malcolm, no. or Fannie Lou Hamer, Jeez. or Messenger Muhammad, or Harriet Tubman, or Sojourner Truth, or Ella Baker, because we have a new light in the room. Uh, uh, right. Just think about it. Yes. How people can begin to refocus yes. and forget all that was done to bring us to this point. And I come to bear witness to those who walked and worked before me. And I know, as we have said so many times, that the struggle is a long and difficult one. And therefore, as Cabral said, we should mask no difficulties, what? Tell no lie and claim no easy victory. There is no easy victory here, black people. No, no. It's good to be out in front, but there's still work to do. Yes. And so the moment of history in which we live is not only hopeful, but also demanding and dangerous yeah. because of the life and death issues that confront and challenge us and the awesome damage being done throughout the world. There is unfreedom in the world still. There's oppression in the world. There's injustice in the world. There's exploitation everywhere in the world. And we cannot pretend that that is over because of an election. And right. thus, there is an ongoing and urgent need to repair our damaged world, heal the gross and grievous injuries 
and human suffering and free and empower their oppressed and disempowered peoples of the world beginning with our own selves. This is clinically clear. Did you hear what I said? Clinically clear. And any honest assessment is evidenced by the ongoing genocide in the fool. Oh, yes. It's not over because of an election. The lingering catastrophe of Katrina. Oh, yes. Can't forget that on our way to Washington. Whoa. The centuries of suffering and the current cruel occupation in Haiti. The enormous destruction of life and resource theft in the Congo. Yes. The brutal occupation of Palestine, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Yes. The social disruption and human destruction of globalization. The joblessness, poverty, ill health, hunger, homelessness in the world. The continued spread of HIV AIDS and other devastating diseases. Sexual and labor enslavement. The continuous predation on women and children and the progressive degradation and destruction of the environment. Yes. All that is not solved by an election. No. There is work to do, black people. Yes, there are struggles to engage. There's progress to be imagined and pursued. Uh. And we are the ones responsible for that. We are the moral vanguard. Have you ever wondered why Obama was supported by that 43% white people? Okay. It looked like, and I'm not putting any other group down when I say this, right? But I have to say it. Okay. You know and I know, no three to five million people be getting ready to see another white man inaugurated, right? No. So that didn't work. If it worked, it wouldn't be a black person then. Can we dismiss that right away? Yes. Are y'all there? You got to talk to him. I'm a black person. They didn't elect a white woman, even. No. They didn't elect a Latino. That's the rising ethnic group. Rescue me if I'm wrong. That's right. Why do you think they chose black people? Why do you think? And they didn't just choose Obama. Obama has meaning as a black person, even though they force him to deny sometimes that he is, or not mention it. <laughs> Rescue me if I'm wrong. Right. Don't y'all get uncomfortable about this conversation now. I love my brother. I'm for my brother. So you know I'm for my brother. Let's all give Obama a hand so you know where I stand. <laughs> but we have to talk to black people. Black people existed before Obama. They exist after Obama. Do you know that? And we'll be struggling all the way. So I ask you, what do you think? They got behind Obama. Because we have a history as a moral and social vanguard. Because, in fact, he himself built on that. When he was at Reverend Wright's church, he learned a spiritual and ethical tradition, the oldest in the world. And he learned to organize. You remember when the white people we're actually, and I'm giving him initiative here. I'm going back to white people in a minute. Look, look. <laughs> Although they all went around the corner. <laughs> oh, look, remember when he started, and he kept saying, I have a community organizing background. They should laugh at that. They should try to diminish that. But guess what? That was a decisive thing. Because even though he used the internet and technology better than anybody before him, in the final analysis, he put millions in the street to walk the streets and to talk to the people. Right. And guess where that comes from? Guess where that valuing, talking to the people comes from? Guess where that social justice tradition that he talks come from? It comes from black people. That's right. The organizing comes from our tradition in the Black Liberation Movement. I'm going to the people, as Nkrumah said, start with what they know, build on what they have, and giving them a sense of their own capacity to teach them that inside them is a capacity to actually create the good world they want and deserve to have. 
That's what Yes I Can mean. But it was already taught by Ella Baker and Harry Tubman and Malcolm X and Messenger Muhammad. I want you to see that. We don't walk in the room as junior brothers and sisters. We don't come to the table uh, naked and in need, but fully clothed in our own history and culture. We have to do that. Otherwise, who are we? Y'all understand what I'm saying? So Obama represents black people. And if he didn't represent black people, if he represented white people in people's mind, if he represented any other people but us, he would not have had the success he had. That's right. And this is not to put anybody down. That's right. We, because of our historical struggle, and because of how racism defines black and white, and because we have this long history of social justice and the struggle for social justice, it is exactly the moral mass that the established order needed in order to repair its damaged image in the world. Do you understand that? Yes. Bush had done such terrible things. Oh, a warmonger, a wager of unjust and unjustifiable war. A guy who only wanted to believe in racial and religious superiority and to establish that as an imperial right. He even turned against his own white brothers and sisters. Uh, even they don't like it. No. <laughs> Who else could give America the moral standing it needed than a son or daughter of black people? Who else? I'm telling you now, you are special people. The messenger taught that. And I told you I'm not a Muslim. I'm just giving credit where credit due. That's right. And it's where you can remember. It's right here so you can't deny. It is he that came and reminded us that we are possessors of dignity and divinity. And that we have to walk in dignity. That we owe it to ourselves to see ourselves as sacred and not violate the sacredness of our person and the person of our brothers and sisters. We needed that. And he told us who our oppressor was. Hello. We needed that. Yes, we did. I'm not going to get into it deep, but you know it. Call him out. <laughs> Call him by his rightful name. Yes. Yes. So nobody's confused. Right. That's part of the black liberation struggle. Yes, that's right. And Obama and everybody else living and dead after that benefited from it. That's right. And I want us to know that. So I want us to keep that tradition. That's what I'm here. When I talk about Kwanzaa being a time to recommit ourselves to repairing and renewing the world, uh. I'm building on an ancient Egyptian tradition. Because all these problems require process and practice of repairing the world, which in its exclusive sense involves not only healing and repairing the world, but healing and repairing ourselves in the process. Yes. Brother Aries, right there, I told him, and I told the reparations people, reparations are not about getting money, although you can have some. Here it is. <laughs> it's about the struggle for justice. That's right. It's about repairing a grievous injury yes. that has been imposed on us. Yeah. And as Malcolm and all the other people taught us, we can only regain our sense of our full humanity, manhood, and womanhood by struggling against those conditions and oppressors who would take those from us. It's in that struggle that we, we learn new truths about ourselves and about our oppressor. We learn that the man is as weak as he wants to be strong, that he can be defeated, and that right can triumph if we give it assistance. Yeah, well. We can't just say it, truth with triumph. No, they'll kill truth. Yeah, well. They'll twist truth. That's right. We have to defend truth. That's we right. have to defend right. Yeah. We have to do it by doing justice 
and struggling to bring good in the world. This interrelated idea of struggling to not only repair the world but to repair ourselves in the process is rooted in the ancient ancestral sacred teaching found in the Husea that says we are morally obligated to constantly repair, restore, and renew the world, making it more beautiful and beneficial than we inherit. Uh -huh. It is called Saru's top, and it means above all to raise up what is in ruins, to repair what is damaged, to rejoin what is divided, to replenish what is depleted or lacking, to set right what is wrong, to strengthen what is weakened, and to make flourish that which is fragile, insecure, and undeveloped. This world encompassing principle and practice provides us with an expansive concept for understanding and approaching our struggle and work in the world. And it offers us a collective vocation worthy of our history and reflective of our commitment to the well-being and wholeness of ourselves and the world. This means, black people, that we must imagine and engage the world in a decisively different way than that of the established order. Obama will be the president of all the people, but he's already surrounded himself Sorry. with people from the old regime. That's right. And he himself said, my election is not the solution, that you have to organize and make happen what you want to happen. That's right. That's He'll said. give help, he's a progressive man, but guess what? If no one is out there but those people that are around him now, he would do exactly what they were doing. That's just a reality, and we have to face that. I know you don't want, a lot of times, I know y'all, I don't mean y'all, but you know it's a lot of people that also want, like Frederick Douglass said, they want progress without struggle. But there's no progress without struggle, right? He said those that want progress without struggle want rain without thunder and light. Uh. They want the ocean without the roar of its mighty waters. They want crops without the necessity to plant and cultivate and harvest them. Uh. Uh. We bring into world what we want by our own work and struggle. There is no alternative to work and struggle to raise images above the earth that reflect our capacity for human greatness and satisfy our need to be free and to flourish as human beings. We must struggle for that. There is no alternative. I know some people have gotten old since the movement. But you don't sit down until the last moment. That's right. You know that. That's right. My ideas are Anna Julia Cooper now. and Du Bois. Now. 93 or 100, still going to meetings. Don't say you're tired. Borrow from the Christian that said, I ain't no ways tired. <laughs> I'm telling you now. <clears throat> there's so much beauty in our culture. Whatever, whatever religious tradition we have, there's beauty in it because we've shaped it in our own African image and interests. We speak our own special culture truth, but sometimes we don't realize it and we let history happen behind our backs. And although we put a president in there, we keep saying white people did it. And they are glad to say, yes, we did with that 43%. You excuse me. You were 90, 95%. No. The Latinos were 67%. I just want you to know who put him in there. And they did it after South Carolina. Look, when Obama first won in Iowa. Iowa, see, I don't even know that state. Iowa. See, that was an open ca ca little caucus thing. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't how white people really thought. You would see that at the end of the election, 43%, right? Right. But they gave you a hint in New Hampshire right after Iowa. Hey. Clinton gave that Damps, white damps in distress conversation. And they ran to her rescue. 
But they made a mistake, right? They yes. began to trash black people. That's right. They began to trash Jesse. That's right. There is no Obama without Jesse, without Reverend Sharp, without Shirley Chisholm. Yes. People are talking about, oh, Jesse's time's over. How can truth be over? How can the struggle of justice be over? That don't even make sense. No. Nobody ever says the old white people are over. Hey. In fact, Barack got some white old white people around him. Now. In fact, he got the endorsement of an old white person. They had to help on stage. Hello. And nobody said he ought to stay home. That's right. I don't even need to call his name. Y'all remember? Only do it with you do they talk to you about generational gaps. Please. They think it as normal that old white man rule. Rescue me if I'm wrong. Did I miss something? I got time. <laughs> I just want you to see yourself, black people. Jeez. You're beautiful people. <clears throat> So I say, and I repeat, we must imagine and engage the world in a decisively different way than that of the established order. That's right. And this requires an ethical vision that privileges and promotes struggle. Did you hear that? An ethical vision that privileges and promotes struggle, directed toward a future and flourishing worthy of our highest idea as African people. And of course, at the heart of this practice and struggle must be Benguzo Saba, Jeez. the seven principles. That's right. Indeed, each principle calls for a corresponding practice. Yes. Right. And we say, Umoja, that, that's, the, hey, that's not just a principle, that's also a call for practice. Ah. I say I'm committed to Umoja. That means I'm committed to a practice of striving for and maintaining unity in the family, community, nation, and race. When I say Kuja Chakalia, self-determination, I mean I'm committed to a principle that teaches me and commits me to what define ourselves, name ourselves, create for ourselves, and speak for ourselves. It's a beautiful thing. We can just go down the line, and it's always a practice, because as we say in Kawaita and us, practice proves and makes possible everything. If you want to say I love, I want you to prove it in practice. Hello. If you say I'm strong, I want you to prove it in practice. Yeah. If you say you're a scholar or intelligent, if you're a thinker for yourself, then I want you to prove it in practice. If you're a good husband and wife, a good friend, a good brother, a good sister, I want you to do what? Prove it in practice. That's all I want. It's not too much to ask, is it? No. So what does this teach us? Well, Moja calls on us to practice a principle togetherness in our relationships. A principle togetherness. Did you hear that? You can't just unite with anybody. You know, that people be wrongdoing. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that. You can't start a business with thieves. You know what I mean? And you can't build a family with the unfaithful. So you got to discipline yourself and you got to discipline others. Do you understand what I'm saying? Practice proves and makes possible everything. And so Umoja Unity calls on us to practice a principle together in our relationship, rooted in mutual respect, justice, and shared good in the world. Kuji Chakalia, self determination, teaches us to define ourselves by the good we do and the way we assert ourselves in the world in life enhancing, world preserving and the upward ways of our ancestors. Ujima, collective working responsibility, reminds us that we must together build the good world we want and deserve to live in and leave a legacy worthy of our history and consciously concerned with our future and the future of the world. Ujima, say it, Ujima. Ujima. Cooperative economic. Urges us to share the working wealth of the world in just and equitable, equitable way and to seek 
the good life of dignity, decency, and prosperity for everyone. Uh. What we want for ourselves, we must want for others. And we begin with our own people and spread outward. Do you understand that? Yes. I want the world, the world, my, my tradition teaches me, our tradition teaches me, Jeez. that the wealth of the world belongs to all the people of the world. Yes. That justice must be for everyone, or it's not justice at all. That's right. And that all the great good is shared good. Freedom, a shared good. Justice, a shared good. Sisterhood, brotherhood, family, a shared good. Friendship, a shared good. And if somebody's doing more of it and getting more of it than the other, it ain't real. Rescue me if I'm wrong. Ain't no one-sided love. You know that. Let's talk a little bit about male-female relationship. No, no. Ain't no one-sided love. No. What you got? One person loving, pardon me, one person not loving, and the other one suffering from bondage of the heart. Ooh. Emotional enslavement. He be done do me wrong, but I love him. No, you just enslaved. Let's face it. You lost your self-concept. You're looking for yourself on the floor. Wow. And you're waiting to be approved by your oppressor. Wow. And you've seen that with a people, but you can also have it with a person. Uh. You ever seen people wanting the oppressor to approve them? Yeah. Well, you can do it as a people, you can do it as a person. Uh. And so what we ask is for a good life of dignity, decency, and prosperity for everyone. Uh. Nia, purpose. Nia, purpose. It calls on us to pursue the collective vocation of bringing, increasing, and sustaining good in the world, and emulation and evocation of our traditional greatness. Kumba. Kumba. Creativity. Creativity. It requires that we constantly strive to make and leave our community and the world more beautiful and beneficial than we inherit. And Imani. Imani. Faith. Faith. Teaches us to believe in the good, to hope for the best, and work and struggle relentlessly to make both a reality. Uh. I'm going to say that again. Imani. Listen to this. Imani faith. It teaches us to believe in the best, pardon me, to believe in the good. Again, it teaches us to believe in the good, to hope for the best, and to work and struggle relentlessly to make both a reality. Uh, uh. I want us to be positive. Hey. This is Kuchi Chagalia, and I want to just take that principle and go back to it and explain it in detail of what we ought to be. All right. Because it involves rooting yourself in African culture. And if you don't do that, all I've said to you won't really matter in the end. That's what's distinct about Kawita, us, and myself. Anything I tell you, I can show you an uh, African reference for it. I can show you a text. Do you understand that? Right. That's why we say one of the most important things you can do, black people, is to dialogue with your own culture. And the culture may be, the text may be written, oral, or living practice. Uh. But you must read your text. Read the life of Harriet Tubman, even if she don't write nothing. Uh. Read the oral account of how she came to the crossroads of life and yeah. freedom. Jeez. You read that Jeez. and get inspiration about why she didn't just run away, but turned around yeah. and redefined freedom from individual escape to the collective practice of self-determination in community. Jeez. And you read the ancient text, the Odu Ifa, that tells you that surely, he said, let's do things with joy, for surely humans have been chosen to bring good in the world. And they're divinely chosen, chosen by the Creator, so that nobody is superior to the other. All humans are chosen, not just one group. What's wrong with that? I'm left out, somebody else is chosen, here I am looking for approval from my oppressor. Oh. We can't do that. That's why we oppose what the white man said about Jeremiah Wright. 
We can't approve our preachers. We can't choose our churches. We can't determine the content of our sermon. We'll preach and teach what we want. That's right. What kind of man or woman will let an oppressor be their teacher? An oppressor cannot be our teacher. So it seems to me we have to root ourselves in the best ideas and practices of our people from ancient Africa to modern Afro-America. From continental Africa to diaspora and African all over the world. Do you understand that? Bring me a lesson of good. Every time I go on the radio, I tell black people, don't be telling me nothing negative about black people. I already heard it from the white man. By the way, he might have gave it to you. Think of something good that your mama did if you can't think of nobody else. That your grandmother, that your father, or your grandfather, or your friend, or your loved one, someone, somebody did something good. Raise up the good, teach it as a model so that your children can benefit from it. And so you can be inspired. Yes. When do we look depressed so many times? Everybody telling you what we ain't done. Oh, yeah. Yeah. People get up in the audience and tell me how I can reach black people. No, how can you reach yourself? How can we make you do what you know needs to be done? Hello. Take you to Ray. I like teaching take you to Ray. Take you to Ray said, if everybody agrees on the revolution and the principles on the revolution, why do you think the revolution suffers? He said, because we talk revolutionary and we move by old habits and ideas. You know that, don't you? Everybody talks black and big, don't they? Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I'm the only one. No, you're not the only one. Ain't nobody doing only one something. You know what I mean? Let's be honest. Everybody doing something good. Raise your hand if you're not, and we'll pray for you. So don't get up and say, ain't nobody doing nothing but you. And if they're not doing anything but you, why didn't you talk to them before you got here? Because sometimes, we like to be the only one in our class, <laughs> even though we not. Give other people credit. I'm forever grateful to black people. And I said it today on, on, on the radio and last, all of Kwanzaa season, every season, I say this. Yes, I created Kwanzaa, but it would have remained an intellectual idea, particular to me, if first, our organization, us advocates, had not embraced it, said it was good, and began to promote it. If the nationalists, larger nationalist community, hadn't embraced it and began to promote it, and if in the final analysis, the people themselves yes. had not embraced it as a basis for value orientation, culture and philosophical grounding, and as a basis for doing their programmatic development for the work they did and do in and for the community. It is black people that took it all over the world. Yes. All over the world. 40 million people. Just think of the think of the power of that. That today, all over the world, 40 million Africans yes. are talking about Kwanzaa, Linguzo Saba, and particularly self-determination. And they're talking about how it means to define ourselves, to name ourselves, to create for ourselves, and to speak for ourselves. And let me close by saying that to define ourselves, we mean define ourselves by the good we do and the dignity bearing way we walk in the world. And the Husea, Reddy Kanoon says, I know myself as a precious staff of the divine. I'm noble, godly to behold excellent in the work I do in the world. What a beautiful way to define oneself. We define ourselves, I repeat, by what we do. Indeed, the Husea also says, the wise are known by their wisdom, but the great are known by their good deeds. And that is what Martin Luther King means when he said, everybody can be great because everybody can serve. And you must serve each other. 
And you must not feel it wrong when you serve each other. And Hosea says, serve God that he may protect and promote you. Serve your brothers and sisters that you may enjoy a good reputation and be respected for it. Serve a wise person so you can learn wisdom. Serve one who serves you. Serve anyone so you can benefit from it. And serve your mother and father so you can go forward and prosper. Service. Service, black people. There is a saying we have. I'm a, I'm a saber mat, which means a moral teacher in the ancient Egyptian Kawita mat tradition. Okay? And there are five commitments we make. The first, it should be a good person in the world. The second, it should be a consistent servant of the people. Third, to be a constant soldier in the struggle. Fourth, to be a continuous student of the teachings. And five, to be a tireless teacher of the good, the right, and the possible. If we could just make and keep that commitment, the whole world would change. So let us define ourselves by the good we do in the world. What does it mean to name ourselves? To name ourselves in self-determination is to name ourselves in reverent respect for our history and highest value. In the 60s, we returned to our name. We retrieved our name. As Malcolm had told us, have you ever heard of a Chinese name Whitfield or a Japanese name Joan? You know something wrong. Right. And Carlos Moore told us, Carlos Moore told us, pets and other animals are named by their owners. But free men and women name themselves. And so we went back to black. We did Sankofa before we knew the word. We reached back and retrieved our name. And we called ourselves in dignity affirming way. Noble one, learned one, kind and caring, generous, just, skilled, patient, powerful, gift of God, master teacher, keeper of the tradition, soldier, warrior, trustworthy and true. Those are the names. No dog or do Mr. Doolittle involved. Just the good. Self-determination to create ourselves, to create for ourselves, is to build up, not destroy. To bring it to being good in the world. To do this in the life-affirming, world-preserving ways of our ancestors. And finally, to speak for ourselves is to do so in ways that bring forth the best of our culture, to speak truth and to demand justice, and to share with our people in the world the best of what it means to be African and human in the fullest sense, and to see African as a unique and equally valuable way of being human in the world, to engage it as a sacred identity. You see, there is no history more holy than ours, no people more sacred. You must remember that so you don't walk in the shadow of your oppressor and hope one day he'll recognize you as an equal. In the beginning you were, others came afterwards. And you have to understand that, that we're the ones who taught the world first as early as 2140 BCE, that humans are in the image of God that they are, come from his very person and that there are certain things we can't do to ourselves or let others do to us for fear of violating that sacred sense. And Jedi in the Middle Kingdom taught the Pharaoh Khufu that he could neither kill nor experiment even on a nameless prisoner because even that nameless prisoner, dishonored, marginalized, is still equal to the Pharaoh as a noble image of God worthy of the highest respect. That's what the Husea said. And we have to read it as the Husea says, Behold, follow the footsteps of the ancestors. Behold their words and do in books. Open them and read their wise counsel. You have to do that, black people. And that means dialoguing with African culture, asking it questions and seeking from it answers to the fundamental issues of humankind. How do we create a just and good society? How do we build strong male-female relationships? How do we raise our children? How do we treat the stranger? How do we establish a right relationship with the environment? How do we engage in the awesome work of peace in the world? Usually we ask other cultures and literature that question, and we take their answers. But who asks Africa? I ask Africa. Our organization, us, asks Africa. 
and the best of you thinking here, you also ask Africa. And we need to get together, those of us who think like this, so we can create a critical mass of people that are constantly dialoguing with African culture and reading the text and analyzing them and extracting the best of what it means to be African and human so we can speak that special truth to the world and use it as a fundamental contribution to the forward flow of human history. This indeed is my closing paragraph. I know that we have great hope. We wouldn't be black if we didn't hope. But I said this, believe in the good. Hope for the best, but also work and struggle to make both a reality. So in this era of great expectation and hope, our task is as it has always been, black people, this Kwanzaa, all year round and before and after. It is to know our past and honor it, to engage our present and improve it, and to imagine our future and forge it in the most effective, expansive, and ethically grounded ways. This means boldly and continuously facing the difficulties and dangers that confront us. It means we must seek and speak truth. We must seek and speak truth. We can't just speak truth, we have to seek truth because the truth we are speaking might not be the one that's actually true. You know that, don't you? If things were as it seemed, there'd be no need for scientific research, right? right? So we must seek and speak truth. Do and demand justice. Treat each other with ultimate respect and loving kindness. Walk and work together righteously. Resist wrong, oppression, and injustice everywhere. And struggle, did you hear what I said? And struggle constantly and continuously to bring, sustain, and increase good in the world. Head is our Kwanzaa, happy Kwanzaa to all of you. We wish for you blessings without number and all good things without end. Hotel. Hotel.